Hello there, good afternoon. This is yours truly, CLJ, coming to you live with a very special response to the beloved, the wonderful, the most excellent bad boys of movie mashing, Sir Del Boy. He's English and 125th heir to the Queen's Elizabeth throne. So have care and wash your rears around him. And the cinematic chop master himself, an absolute favy from the 80s, Davey. You can find that cinema chop shop on YouTube. Where two, uh, where two titans combined forces and created top five movie villains. Where, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, go give them a watch, enjoy the show, have a great time. Where they discuss on their top five movie villains of of all time, and and I thought, you know what, let me go make like a response video to this, and here we go. Here is. The COJ's top five movie villains, five being the least and one being the best. We're going to kick it off with, and here's my number five it is Cleric Bodeker from Robocop 1987. He's a true menace to society, doesn't hold back, doesn't give any cares towards law enforcement, corporation authorities, men, women, children, buildings. Villains like him are missing in this day and age of cinema, and me being an OCD clean freak, him also being slovenly, disgusting, having no manners, equals a great combo for a villain. Number four is the T-800 series from The Terminator, 1984. From a quote from, from Michael Ben's Cal Reese from the movie, listen and understand. That Terminator is out there. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear and absolutely will not stop ever until you are dead. And to make it worse, he's a literal walking tank of metal endoskeleton and our weapons doesn't do nothing but leave nothing but a smear on him. That's a terrible mix for a villain to have. Number three is Hilly Holbrook from The Help from 2011. A wild card in my top five. Hilly Hillbrook is the devil in a Southern Belle's dress. Nothing redeemable about her. Narcissist, racist, selfish, inconsiderate, cold hearted, no empathy or sympathy. Even to her own circle and her own mother who she treats like dirt. She is all about herself. Even alpha bitches wouldn't want to associate with Hilly Holbrook. Unlike, unlike Clarence Bodeker, Haley is also is an OCD neat freak, which means she broke the mold. The actress, who who's the exact 180, totally owned the role. You truly hate it and want an evil upon Haley Holbrook in every way, shape, and form. That makes a great villain. The actress herself recently said that she regretted the role and hated it as, as being Holly Holbrook. You know, dang it, I was sad to hear that because her role as Holly Holbrook, that's what made me a fan of hers. Trust me, we still love you and you're a phenomenal actress and and a director. You uh, you did an A-plus interstellar job out, out this and continue to rock. Number two is Clubber Lang from Rocky III, 1982. Clubber Lang, to this day, is the only one to lay Rocky Balboa on the mat. Ivan Drago and Rocky IV gets all the acolytes of being Rocky's rival and most villainous. But Clubber Lang, what, Clubber Lang, I would think he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drago. He could actually probably win against Drago. Maybe not due to Drago's endurance, but come on, you can't deny Lang's powerful haymakers and brutal hooks. Let's be real. Drago will be in a hurt locker within the first three rounds against Lang. Yes, killing Apollo Creed was the oh, hell no. But, 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 with my number three villain, you know, above, you can be malicious and malevolent, villainous force of nature, and not even draw blood from the protagonist. It's all about the air, the stature, and his or her personality and character that and he, she does. To be honest, a great villain has great weakness. To mirror the heroes and clever, you know, to mirror the heroes Rocky Balboa's, Clubber Lane's weakness was stamina, and, you know, he didn't have the ability to go the distance. Rocky III also had the shortest fight ever. I think it goes, yeah, three rounds, that's it. Well, to be honest, Rocky IV was essentially Rocky IV the montage, the movie, but still 80s golden cheese, and I love cheese. Number one is Thanos from the Avengers Infinity War from the MCU 2018. Thanos is the only MCU villain to give the Avengers a great, formidable foe and serious threat, and also... Snap half the snap out half the universe. 
Thanos was a paragon of a villain. He was smart, calculated, knew what he was doing, and empathetic to his goal. Thanos wasn't a victim of that MCU humor, which derailed the other MCU villains and heroes before Infinity War. Thanos had heart, soul, strong foundations on what he does. Thanos is the only villain to turn the Hulk into the bruise and accomplish his goal. Let's be real, Thanos could beat the Hulk in the comics too. You know, that's a fact. Let's read the Infinity Gauntlet series. You know, the audience was more mad and angry at Peter Quill Star-Lord for messing up the plan rather than being mad and angry at Thanos. You know your villain's compelling and good when the people's cheering for you and hated the one who's one of the part. One of the protagonists that screwed up the plan. Another reason why Thanos is my number one is Thanos is multidimensional, articulate, cool, calm, and collected. Isn't relying on others and and have regal and 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 and, and, that, and that intimidation factor with, with Thanos. I mean, when Thanos was on screen, yeah, you was intimidated by him. Now to turn the tides of battle, in-game Thanos was butchered to no end. In-game Thanos was one-dimensional, cartoonish, lame and boring. They almost dark world Thanos in Endgame. What happened to the Infinity War Thanos? I guess at the end of the day, the bad guys must lose and have to give it, you know, and just have to give the audience a happy ending. And this concludes my top five movie villains. Oh, I forgot to mention an honorable mention. That goes to the Joker from, from Batman 1989. Jack Nicholson, that's my favorite Joker and always will be. Officially my very first Batman movie, being the age of five when it hit theaters. And even at that age, I was very aware of my surroundings, movies, characters, and stories, even drawn and story making myself back then. Jack Nicholson's Joker was a true jack of all trades. He was menacing, terrifying, mesmerizing, charismatic, uh, and hilarious, just like the comic book Joker, a total package of cinematic villainy. 1989 was a true special year in cinema. Now, now I conclude this, and I hope that you all enjoyed my list. And give likes, shares, comments down below, and also, you know, put yours down. Now the mic is on to you and your top five movie villains. Until next time, peace, love, and happiness. Happy watching. Take care of yourselves and be safe and be responsible out there. Laters.